started. Okay, Kukanaka. Let's start with um, C4. Okay, we get a uh, reverse Sicilian type of setup. C4, E5. Oh, the reverse Grand Prix. Okay. Let's just get my pieces out first. Let's see. I guess I want to play um, E3 at this point. Uh, it blunts the bishop and it slows down this advance of uh, F5 uh, to F4, which is what uh, Black wants to play. And uh, later maybe I can play D4 and kick this bishop. In fact, maybe right now. Pawn to D4, pawn takes, pawn takes. It's supported by the knight and the queen. And um, just attacked. Only attacked by the bishop, so that, that will force the bishop to move. does take an eye off of the uh, f4 square, but the uh, the knight and the bishop are both looking at that square, so it doesn't seem to be a problem. Knight f4 could be played. He went back here. Normally they, they drop back along this diagonal and try and keep a look at the f2 square here. Um, I could also play bishop f4 looking at these dark squares here. He can move this pawn forward though and probably will. Let's just castle and see. <clears throat> see how um, black deploys. So black was moving lightning fast up until this point, gaining time on the clock. Um, okay, went to uh, d6 anyway, without being asked. So if I play d5, is that um, an interesting move? Uh, d6 does defend the, the f-pawn over here. That was That's one point. Bishop here. Right here. Maybe um, <clears throat> pushing the queenside pawns and giving, trying to gain more scope for this uh, bishop. Like if I play b5 here, pawn takes, pawn takes, puts pressure on this uh, c6 pawn. And um, if he advances, I can take it. He ignores it. Okay. And he's just pushing on on the king side. So let's uh, take here. That was my plan and see how he takes back. If he takes back with the knight, then I get in B, D5 without any trouble. So he took back with the pawn, but now he's kind of tied down to this, uh, defending this pawn here. I'm like, I, could I play knight B5 <laughs> now? <laughs> knight B5. It's this pawn and uh, that pawn and there, but uh, he can just ignore it. He can't take it, maybe because I'll grab the rook in the corner, but he could just ignore it. Let's see. So I guess he's going to try and push on with f4, so I need to calculate. Pawn here, I take, he takes, I take with the bishop. Seems okay. Um, do I want to do anything else? I want to get the bishop off the back rank, I guess. So now f4 is going to come with a tempo. Oh, he wants to hit that pawn. Yeah, that's that's reasonable. Um, so I push forward here, and he takes there. I guess that's not so great. Queen to a4, hitting his bishop and protecting the pawn, maybe, and looking at this pawn. Maybe that's a good idea. I really expected him to push on with f4 anyway. I mean, putting my bishop there is sort of like a, waving a red flag because he can play f4 with tempo. I mean, it loses a pawn, but it opens up my king. So isn't that um, a good thing? So, okay, I wasn't attacking his bishop, huh? Because his bishop is loose there, is, is defended by the knight there. But now I, when I play bishop takes c6, he can't take back with the knight. Well, he could, but that would drop the uh, bishop. And if he doesn't take it, his rook is trapped in the corner, so he's sort of forced to take it. So let's take a look at this. Bishop takes, knight takes. I can also take with a queen and stay on this diagonal. And then his bishop is under attack and he has to defend it in some way. Or is it better to grab the bishop? Server. Either way, this seems to, to win a pawn and that seems useful. Unless I've overlooked something. So, queen or knight? Where's the knight going? The knight's hitting here and here. And 
um, it's also under attack, so he will have to move it or defend it. He moves it, attacks my queen, and also looks at this square here. That's true. So let's drop back and hit the knight again. The knight can come into d3. I can hit it with the rook. It can go to b2. I've got to be careful. <laughs> Okay, he just defends it there. Yeah, that's fine. So, what next? Knight here, or rook here, knight here, knight to b5 looks interesting. Hitting the um, the d pawn again, opening up um, <clears throat> a move like rook. Opening up for a move like okay, so now he goes for the uh, the f4 push. Yeah, so I was expecting while that a while earlier. So now at this point, I can retreat the bishop. Actually, I'm not committed to taking it. Um, but takes takes knight takes. Say does he does he mate me on this diagonal? He can he can put a rook here, but his king is in the way, so he's not mating me immediately. In fact, I have time to move my king to the side here. Can he get on this light squared diagonal? I don't see it. So I think I want to take. <clears throat> okay, he doesn't want to take back. He wants to um, push on. I'm not sure. That keeps this uh, file closed. So it doesn't really help opening it up for the attack. Let's see, what can I do? What constructive move do I have? I have knight to g3 looking at... Um, Looking at the f5 square, that looks interesting. Hitting his king and the bishop, maybe trading one of them off. Yeah, so he's allowing that. So knight here, check, king moves, knight takes, queen takes. It's the bishop that's well defended. And is there any way I could get more pressure on this pawn? That would be nice. Maybe just move a rook to the center, though. Okay, let's go ahead Check. and <clears throat> trade this off. This should help things a little bit. Make things make life easier for me. Yeah, another plan I'm thinking of is queen to b3 and pawn to a3. Hit that knight, deprive the knight of these squares these with the queen move. Okay, so he goes there. Let's take here. And then, um, like I said, queen to b3. <clears throat> so I want to play the move a3, chase that knight away, and then get on this light squared diagonal where I'm hitting his uh, king. Yeah, so he goes there first. That's that's interesting because now he can support a piece on. Um, oh no, he can't. I thought they were covering the same squares, but they're not. He's threatening here and here, or here and here. Let's kick that knight. Kick that knight away. Okay, the knight goes back, hitting this pawn which is defended. Let's um, pin the knight. Just looking at squares where this knight might jump to that hit the queen. It can come here and here, but they're both protected by pawns at the moment. This knight can go here. That should be okay. Okay, he just unpinned. So how to get a little more pressure here, maybe with the, um, with the rook hitting this knight. This king looks very open. <clears throat> okay, so he's going for the um, defense of the knight. Let's see, if knight takes bishop, rook takes queen, rook takes rook, queen takes knight, he could throw in a check there. So, bishop here, knight takes bishop, 
Rook takes queen. Knight here check. The knight escapes. The king goes to the corner. Then he takes the queen. It's like two pieces for the queen. It still should be good for me. Although that knight, <laughs> knight being lodged on the f3 square is kind of annoying. The, uh, the d pawn would be falling at the end of that, I think. Okay, what now? I'm not really threatening to take the knight. Yeah. So if I kick um, this knight, where is he going? Can't go, he could go here. Can't go here, here, or here. Um, but he could come back to there, or he could come over here. But it gives this square for my knight. Bring, I can bring my knight into the action here. Oh, you know, the square I should go to with my knight is um, c3. That would, that would put more pressure on this knight, which is basically pinned here. Yeah, he can move with um, a tempo on my queen, can't he? Okay, so we will open up the uh, e-file this way. Maybe trade rooks. Sitting this pawn. So let's take... And... Um, hmm. Yeah, if I keep taking... It's not going to be so good. I mean, if I put my rook here to e1, he can take, pull the bishop away, and then grab this. Uh, he can grab the f-pawn, which I don't want to give up. So maybe bishop here. He can hop in there with the knight. Yeah, it's not bad. Not bad. And now where can I go with my knight? Back here, probably. Cover the um, e4 square. His knight has no... You know, this knight looks good on b3, but it, it cannot really go anywhere dangerous. And I'm hitting the um, e-pawn, which he defended. D-pawn. I'm hitting the d-pawn. could also just trade queens here. Let's see. I would have rook, bishop, and knight versus rook and two knights. But my, my pawn structure is not that impressive. I don't know if that's winning. <clears throat> so... What's a good way to play this? Ah, I could take the knight and then play bishop here. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, maybe I can distract this knight in some way. Okay, what I'm thinking is knight to um, d4 to, to attack this knight. And if he takes, I'll take back with the bishop, skewering the um, skewering the queen there. And if uh, if he goes there, what do I have here? Hmm. <clears throat> yeah, maybe that's no good. He can take it. And then if he takes back with the queen, if he takes back the rook, then I have the skewer. But if he took back with the queen, this would be a check. Yep, we can take a look at that. Okay, but that loses a piece. And let's see. So let's just bring the bishop back. So I'm a bishop up. There's two against three. Yeah, the pawns are even. I have four pawns, and he has four pawns because I started to pawn up. Had a pawn up from earlier, and like I said, his king is kind of exposed, so I don't think he can survive this. So like check, check, and then the queen over here should be should be pretty fatal. And the bishop is securely holding these pawn this pawn on f2. That's nice. Blockading the e pawn and these pawns are a little bit slow to attack my king. The h and g pawns. Still have a couple steps away. He goes for it, yeah. But I think... Oh, the check. I don't have the check immediately. But I have... 
an immediate mate threat. Queen here is mate. And he blocks my queen. Okay, that's good. Hmm, what else? What's my next trick? <laughs> If I'm too slow, these those pawns will become an issue on on against my king. <clears throat> oh, but he moved the pawn forward, so this is this is happening again. That's what I have here. That pawn was doing a job blocking the dark squared diagonal, so it couldn't do both jobs. Black resigns. Of blocking the light squared Server and the dark squared diagonals. Okay, well we'll take a look at that in the postmortem. See you guys later. Bye.